They are one of the largest companies here in, in the U.S. Another one uh, that I use here with an air gun. But to give it additional uh, strength, that the frame, this top, this is the top bar, this is the bottom bar, and these are the sides. That the top bar would not leave everything else and just come out of by itself. I put an extra staple inside here, and an extra staple inside here. And you use uh, wood glue, or would that wood glue. be? I use wood glue. Okay. I use wood glue. Chamber or the deep box. You start off with 10 frames. There are also 8 frame boxes, but this is a 10 frame box. Some beekeepers are starting to go to the 8 frames because the two outer frames tend to have less bees. So, and they sort of stand to stay more in the center. So by eliminating that extra two frames, they more concentrated just in where they were working. Do you have there in your hand with the foundation? When it's built up like this, I, I borrowed this from a hive this morning. <laughs> you can see the plastic here. Yeah. And you can see where they built the comb on the foundation. It's like building a house. Six of these in nectar to make one wow. that my drying of the honey was drier than what they produce in that honey is heavier than water mm -hmm. the honey that i extracted the year before i had it in the bottle the honey that i dehumidified i put it on top of the honey from my state hmm. the one that i extracted that i dehumidified was darker than the one from the previous year so the darker honey is on top, lighter honey is below. Honey is heavier than water. Next day I came, the darker Switch. honey was at the bottom, the lighter honey was on top. Huh. They have this side which is medium, which is what they usually use. Um, there's another one a little shorter, about this much shorter. They call it a, a shallow super. This is called a medium super. And then there's another big keeper that uses another size this size this is bigger than this one than, than this box so when you put it inside the hive mm. you see what you, at the bottom here mm -hmm. so this is an, a different size so when you're doing beekeeping when you're buying equipment from people if they don't have the size that you want or you know how you can swap over to regular sizes you don't want to have three sizes in, in, in the operation at least two sizes the deep and what it is give them a little boost a little help i this this is called a boardman feeder um it's in the hive you put it in the hive so instead of getting 10 frames you start off with 10 frames instead of leaving 10 frames you take one out or, or, and, and you put it inside here people use sugar water i don't because if the bees don't use it within a week it turns sour so I put dry sugar and I may dampen it with the same bee healthy stuff I spoke about. I mix that with water and I just dampen it. Not to be in liquid form but a little damp. Does the color of the box matter? I see you have it painted green. The box, good question. Stick to light colors because the sun here in Florida does a number on the hives. You have to cut this wax off to expose all the cells for the honey to, to take shock. But when you expose the wires here and you put it inside the, the extractor and it starts to go wrong like this in the extractor, mm. the centrifugal force sends the honey out. Mm. If the honey flies out on the <laughs> inside of the drum, goes down to the bottom and you strain the honey out there and you put it in buckets if it's a small operation or you translate or pump it into drums portion there this is an inner cover whole bees wouldn't be able to come through we have one on the hive outside there the bees wouldn't come through but the hot air will escape they have to keep the hive cool they call it um, a ventilation if some people use the bee escape here when they're going to extract honey they will put the bee escape the bees can only go through that bee escape in one direction. So the bees, if you have put it in the correct way, you want the bees to go down because the honey is up here. 
put it on there and you put the box back on top. When you come tomorrow, this box is clean of bees because the bees went down, they want to get out. They went down, they couldn't come back up. In on screened um, top cover top covers there so screen so the it, it lets the heat anticipate so where you have a solid board there it would be yeah. there you go you, you, you can use it but this is not a screen as you're talking for you this is not a screen for ventilation this is an excluder the only exclude, exclude the queen from coming up but all the other bees except the drones all the workers can go through to pass through this so not and not to say that I didn't block the entrance of the hive the only time I ever block the entrance of the hive is when I'm moving them from here to another site. And the commercial beekeepers don't even do that. They just come with their forklift, pick up the entire pallet, put it on the truck. Hey, we're going, are you coming or not? <laughs> <laughs> and off they go. This, yeah. normally when you have a hive, you would have this, the inner cover, and the top cover. They call this a telescoping cover because it telescopes over the rest of the boxes. This excluder comes in when you're putting on now. You're going to leave this for them to build themselves up and, and they get strong. So they fill all the frames up and they're healthy, they're looking well, and they, they're running out of space. You don't want to give them more work than they really need. Well, and you're going to put more boxes on. You put this on. This prevents, this is called a queen excluder. It prevents the queen from coming up mm. to lay eggs up in here. All you want now, the box is going on top of you, all you want is honey now. So you, you, you put the queen excluder on and she would only be confined to these two boxes here. And the, the rest of the workers will come up and build and make the honey like I showed you with the other friend. If she can handle whatever they can handle. A very, very strong hive, she may need a 2,000 eggs per day because they can handle that. Yeah. And her lifespan, <coughs> three to four years, but <coughs> she, um, it depends on the operation because three to four years, if it's only down season, no, no, nothing is flowing, she will be laying less. You have to remember, the first week to two weeks, she made some flight. She goes out, and after meeting, on average about 17 different drones, <laughs> within the first week to two weeks, that's it for her lifetime. She's not coming out to meet again, that's it. So how much sperm she can store in the spermatator will determine her lifespan in, in, the, in the method that you're using in terms of moving your bees around. Because if you're going after this floral over here, over here is, let's say, the Brazilian peppers, then you move them over to the orange blossom, then you move them to palmetto, then to the mango. She is laying constantly. So the faster she burns up all that sperm in the, from the spermatator and has nothing more, she starts to become a failing queen. The, the workers will detect that and they will start to prepare to make a new queen. And they make a new queen by she lay fertile size of the cell that she lays the egg into. The, the bigger cells are usually drone cells. Then there's a larger cell which is a queen cell. We'll get to that shortly. But she goes into the cell in reverse and lay an egg and come up. And come up. One egg. If you look down inside a, a, a cell and you see three and four cells, four, three and four eggs, that's an indication that the hive is queenless. The workers started laying eggs, and because they never went out to mate in flight, all those eggs are drone cells. They are male bees. Mm -hmm. So is a hive doomed for failure? So you can take a <clears throat> take that weak hive and put a, a sheet of newspaper on top of another hive and take, just take the hive and rest it on top of, of, of this hive. And by the time they eat through the newspaper and they start intermingling, mixing with one another, they get used to smelling one another, they would not kill one another. As he's finishing there, okay. this is a queen cell. Queen cells usually point down. The, all the other cells are usually horizontal with a little slope upwards. That white stuff that the, the, the larva is resting on, that's the royal jelly. Ah. So when people are telling you, hey, 
I want some royal jelly. Okay. You're going to pay for it? Yeah. <laughs> because when they're selling you honey, and, and remember I said it's just about 12, under normal conditions, it's just about 12 of these cells you will find in a hive when they're preparing. They are beekeepers who specialize in, in breeding queens. And to get a royal jelly, then you're not going to get it, you're interfering, you're taking out the, 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 the larva to get to the royal jelly and you got to go with a little scoop now. So uh -huh. you going to... Run. The queen and the drone sell them, feed themselves. They are fed by the other working bees. The drone only purpose is to meet the, the, the queen bee. Um, they meet in flight and upon his job falls backwards like that and dies. Mm. Because oh, yeah. his body parts are gone with the queen. Mm. Mm. And that's an indication for another drone to say, hey, why too? They want it, huh? This is just a, a, a picture of a beekeeper inspecting the hive. Yeah? And his arms are not covered. Yeah, yeah. Why is that? <laughs> I, I don't wear gloves either. I, as okay. a matter of fact, when I have long sleeves like this, I fold them up so the bees wouldn't get down inside here. I fold it back up to my elbow. Oh. So they would not get inside here because when it's down like this, oh, you, you, you oh, know. Okay. So I fold it up here, and and sometimes I tend to think like, sometimes I I tend to think like um, you go to someone's yard and their dogs, their dogs. No, I I am not afraid of the dog. I go to the dog. I do the same thing with the bees because I I think they they detect some type of fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. um, Dawn was with me a couple of weeks ago, and um, I sense I sense a little fear with Dawn. Even though she came there, she was a bit reserved, and the bees let her knew that that um, hello, you're not as brave as Mr. Butcher. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 they left one with her on her hand. I, you know, you remember that Dawn? Yeah, yeah. A swarm leaving the hive. I remember I said within the first, as soon as they leave the hive, they, they're heavy. They're looking for a place to land and, and regroup before they move to a location. Well, this is what it looks like when they go on a tree or a branch. And what's nice about getting them when they are like this is that you can go with your little clippers and cut all the branches that they are not in and leave like the main branch and leave that for last and just pick the whole thing up and walk with it to wherever you want to put it, whether you want to put it in this side or whether you want to kill them. I wouldn't want to kill them if it's like this because this is easy money. You have a hide here. This this can cost you about $150, these bees. Not not to remove it, you know. If you wanted to buy these bees, mm -hmm. it, it could be about $150. Have you actually bought Here or bees? in Trinidad? I uh, hear. No, the bees here, I buy queens. Okay. And once you, you, you put queens, you know your source of your queens. Right, right. That, even if your bees are vicious or, what was it? Defensive. 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 Protective. 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 Even if the bees are protective, <laughs> I, I got to make it, give it a nice twist yeah. state so yeah. They, yeah. they're not aggressive. They're, yeah. they're yeah. protective. Okay. <laughs> if you put docile queens in, okay. the eggs is about three weeks for them to hatch. So when she starts to lay, in the height of the honey season, the, the regular bees may only live about three to four weeks. Yeah. In the off season, they live about three to, three to four months. Right. So in, a, in about three to four months, you would see a, a change over from that aggression, okay. protectiveness, to a more docile. Okay. So that's how, how you get around now. And that's what I w would like to do to Trinidad, but it's a hassle to get queens down there. So, yeah. the, uh, uh, a, a seasoned beekeeper, they tend to be a little smaller, but you know them by, by the aggression, the, by the protectiveness. <laughs> Can, can you talk about pheromones and 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 that? So like I was I was stung by in one one of my bees, and I went inside real quick and and took out the venom sac and all that, and then I put witch hazel on there because I read that if a bee smells another bee sting, it it senses that I I died protecting the hive sting here. I, Is that I, true? I I think so more so with the um, with the Africanized okay. with the Africanized bees, um, but. 
you turn into bees you don't have time yeah. the, the trick is when you get stung by a bee you want to get that sack yeah. out of your, your, your skin as quickly as possible because even though the bee may have taken off and left the sack and it's inside with, with that with you that sack is still pumping the venom in because it's a little sack outside and the venom if you leave it there it there will be a little a little a little like a like a white pimple kind of thing a small white pimple you will see there and within an hour or so it disappeared because all went into your skin so you want to get that out as quickly as possible so there's less venom getting into your skin you know just pull it i was going to say you just just <laughs> i used to raise bees in new jersey before moving to florida in at the end of fall they start preparing for winter. Mm -hmm. The hive is being downsized and downsized and downsized. The workers stop feeding the drones mm -hmm. and start dragging them out. Hey, you no longer need it. Get out. Oh, wow. Because they only go to utilize the food. Yeah, yeah. And we are preparing for winter. We need food to get us up through. Mm -hmm. I you actually yeah, see them <laughs> stinging them and dragging them out. Mm -hmm. The heat that the bees generate inside the hive, if this is not there, they stay in a cluster over different sections of the hive. The condensation falls back on them oh. and then they freeze to them. Oh, I see. So you see clusters of bees and you want to know why they die. Yeah, 42, okay. Anything above 42 degrees, they will come out and see if there's anything. Even if there's snow on the ground, they will come out and see if they can get something. And then uh. they go back into the hive. If they come out and they take their poop and they go back in the hive. <laughs> you know? But um, anything below, anything below, 42 degrees, 43 degrees. They're inside there in a cluster. And in that cluster, they move around the hive. If it becomes very cold and they're not moving at all, they can have honey a frame or two over, but they're not moving because they slowly change positions to keep warm. Who's on the outside of the cluster will move inside, who on the inside come outside, just to stay warm. And if that's not happening because it's very, very cold, they can have frames inside a, hive or a frame or two over and they wouldn't get it. And then next thing you know, you have, because it was too cold for too long, you have a dead hive. What we didn't work, talk about was the worker. The worker has different duties to do during her lifespan. They, they, they pollinate is one job. They collect nectar to make honey. Okay. And you can use them for many different things. I okay. use, I, one second, I use bees as security. At my bee house, I have a, a hive right next to the door. Ah. So beekeepers now are into pollinating and that honey becomes a side. Mm. Ah. So much so in California, they can't even get enough that they're bringing bees from Australia on pallets by air wow. to, to put in the, in the armor. You just go and put it in, in, the, in, in the cells but he's exchanging it with a younger bee because this bee cannot the oh, young yeah. bees don't forage when as soon as they born that's the last step before they die they, they become nurse bees worker bees inside the hive guard bees and the last cycle is um foraging foragers foragers mm -hmm. so here it is that this forager is exchanging honey <coughs> with the one with the tongue sticking out that's the one that's receiving <laughs> The one with the tongue sticking up is the one that's receiving nectar from, from the forager. <laughs> Here we have the queen. The queen and other worker bees around. Those are attendants. She, remember I said she, the only time I, I, I actually see a, a queen feeding herself is as soon as she hatches. As she comes out of the, uh, the, the cell straight to the nectar and she feeds herself. Other than that, always attendance around her. Royalty, you know. <laughs> Two weeks, they can fill this up. Depending on what's happening and how strong the hive is. Um, and the two pairs of wings in flight is, I don't know if you want to say mechanically, but it's done in such a way that it, it hooks and get them that flight. Mm -hmm. More, more flying. I, I tend to think like um, military airplanes, you know, the wings can go forward and, mm -hmm. you know, and when it's not in use, it detaches and back on the it's not a resting in, in rest. Mm -hmm. What happens that is 
you put a trap you put another box between here between the right here that the bees are going to go into and when they go in they are forced to pass through mesh cloth I think it's one inch or a quarter inch I can't remember just enough for the bees to go through and then going through it knocks it off of their legs because they kind of got a squeeze to get through it knocks it off of their legs and it's collected in a drawer in the same little gadget I told you you put there and then you just pull out your drawer put it in your container and you put back in the drawer now you don't want to do that for more than 24 to 48 hours on any one hive because that's their food yeah it's their food yeah. pollen core oh, okay oh, nice. Simple. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 oops i would light a little bit put it into the smoker and then put some more on top and keep puffing and i would also add wood to even the um the the, the florida oak bark mm -hmm makes good fuel and, and it lasts longer and yep nothing nothing is coming from it but with the wood it's like I don't know if you're familiar with charcoal pits from the mines down there except coal and, and you have to know your supplier because if you make coals with hardwood you get a nice flame you get a longer flame it, it lasts longer than if you make coals from soft wood I want to make sure that I have those frames with the foundation in it inside there because if I have the boxes alone and it's just a big empty space, if a hive should no. swarm inside there, it's, it's a, mess. a total mess. Mm -hmm. uh, honeycomb all over, mm -hmm. honey flowing, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So by having the 10 frames inside there, if they decide to use the box because hey, it's like a homeless person finding a, a home, a house. They don't care if the roof's leaking. That's right. They don't care if the roof's leaking. And they walk right in.